Good morning folks, on this quick trip to Norway I've got very short stays in Bergen and Stavanger both places that have always intrigued me so in this video we're going to have a quick dash around them both and see if they're anything like I imagined starting here in Bergen Now you might be thinking, Bergen's awfully quiet today well that's because I've had to start this video early in fact it's not even 6am and the reason for that is the weather. When I arrived here yesterday it was absolutely chucking it down with rain and that rain has only just really stopped now and it leaves me with a short window of about four hours before it returns again to record this video so I haven't had much sleep. So what were my first impressions of the place? Well, to be honest with you, when I arrived they weren't that great and that's because I always had it in my head that Bergen was this small, cute town not realising that it's Norway's second biggest city so as well as I'm sure being beautiful it's also got all the other stuff associated with being a big city and I'll try and show you both sides of that today Now I think this takes us up towards the city centre but don't take my word for that, I'm always lost. So while I find my bearings, I've got a wee quiz question for you. So Oslo is, of course, the biggest city in Norway. This is the second biggest. And we're also going to Stavanger today, which is the fourth biggest. But can you guess the third biggest city in Norway? Apparently this stone here is like the main meeting place in Bergen, so if you've lost your loved ones, this is where to come. Aye, so I think this is like the main shopping street and it's not that attractive and it's got all the normal McDonald's and all that trash but I'm cutting down to one of the most famous parts of Bergen at the moment and in fact just off in front of me I can see like what will be the start of the funicular here and we'll try and go on that a wee bit later I don't think it'll be open yet I tell you what, it wasn't easy getting up this morning but it's so much nicer to be filming at this time of day I'll need to bear that in mind Now it might not look much from outside but I've heard this is a very cool place to get lunch serving fresh local seafood so we might need to try and pop back here before we leave And it's always going to be better than going to the Burger King next door isn't it? Ah you can tell we're in a very wealthy country all the shops look very smart and even here we've got a Porsche dealership right in the centre of town There's a wee spontaneous souvenir So if my memory serves me right, a wee turn here should take us down to the harbour. There we go, water. Aye, so over on the other side of the harbour we've got the old wooden houses of Brigan, I think that's called. It looks very nice, although some of them are being refurbished at the moment. And there's some nice boats there as well, even a super yacht. I think we'll need to head round that way. I don't think these are sightseeing boats, I think these are regular ferries to take you around different parts of Bergen. I tell you what, per person, Norway must have more ferries than any other country. Ah right, so behind me this is the old fish market, although it's not looking so old anymore and I have heard that it's not very authentic anymore either. So it's kind of more for the tourists, it's not a real fish market, but it'd still be worth a look if I could get in. I'm too early for everything.
there's nothing I love more than coming down to a harbour and having a look at all the boats, especially the sailing ones, I find them so interesting and look at this beauty behind me. Talking about boats, look at this. The Christian Rarich. Now I know I'll be saying that wrong, but maybe one of you can tell me, is this always here or is it just visiting? These old buildings are so cool, especially the wonky ones. And although this is like a tourist area now, it's all very authentic. Some of them are dating to the 1700s. And although there is a bit of refurbishment work going on at the moment, it's nice to see they're being looked after. Oh, and look at that. You can buy your own wee brigand house. Oh. I think I can wander up here. How cool is this? My notes were telling me the wooden structures here date to the 1700s, but some of the stone foundations beat them by a couple of hundred years. It's just great to see the craftsmanship here too. And this one that's being restored, look at all the wood that's been delivered for it. So nice to see that it's been done properly, eh? Oh, I forgot to have a look at that super yacht. Let's see if we can get a wee bit closer. Ah, a wee bit of sun. And for about the first time on this Norway trip, it makes all the difference in the world, doesn't it? Every time I see a super yacht, I always imagine Aquaholic touring the guest cabins. Where are you, Nick? And here we've got the passerelle that extends when you're stern to berthing. That's more like the super yacht I'll end up with. Wow, there's more. That one's called Shinkai. I'm sure I've seen it somewhere before. Oh, but let's be honest, this one knocks both of those super yachts right out the water. I'm sorry folks, I'm getting so distracted, but my final thought down here at the harbour, imagine trying to land a helicopter up there in a stormy sea. Right, let's head over to the funicular. It's meant to be sunny until 10am, but I'm not sure I trust that forecast. Right, let's get ourselves a funicular ticket. Uh, this one. So it's 160 Norwegian krona. I think that's about 12 quid. Not too bad. And down here we go, next departure in 11 minutes. These are very modern, but they're massive. Cool. Now I've just taken a seat near the top, but to be honest with you, even if it's busy, it doesn't matter where you are because you've got this brilliant panoramic glass ceiling.
Folks, this is spectacular. If you're in Bergen, please, please come up here. Whether you take the funicular or if you're fitter than me, maybe you could walk it. Oh, cool. We've got some locals down here just chilling out in the path. Kashmir goats. You're as tired as me this morning, number one. Ah, not a bad wee spot for a sit down. Oh, wonder if you can stay there. And from up here you can extend the adventure if you've got time. There's loads of hiking trails that would keep you active for weeks. It's absolutely perfect. See you later guys, have a nice day. Now if I had more time, of course, that old chestnut, I'd happily spend all day up here on those hiking trails, but if you're coming here, I highly recommend the place. And even if the weather's not great, you've still got this beautiful indoor viewing area. That's a view I could look at all day. But anyway. The funicular gets busy busy so I recommend doing like what I did and take one of the first ones of the day or else you'll be in a queue. The only problem of course with doing the funicular and getting a view at that is that I realise I'm seeing such a small part of Bergen like maybe 99% of tourists to be honest. Just this little bit that's jutting out into the bay. There's so much more to see 
But I'm not going to be too hard on myself, I've only got a couple hours. Let's go and get some breakfast. I really, really like this. I think it's a sailor's monument. I can't find a plaque or anything to tell me more, but it's fantastic. I might have missed something, I haven't seen any, but are these tram tracks? So are there or were there trams in Bergen? If you know, let me know in the comments. Now that is exactly what I want for breakfast, a cinnamon bun. It all looks very posh, but it's better than a Starbucks, isn't it? Could I have a skillings baller, please? Is that how you say it? Sit here, please. Do you want a receipt? Uh, yes, please. I've been so looking forward to trying one of these. It's a very local thing. Cinnamon buns in Norway are famous. Oh, yes. It's good. Oh, see, in the middle especially, they're so soft. They just tear away. Beautiful. This is just what I needed. Oh, that was awfully good, but now with the rain threatening a big return, I think I'll head back to my room, have a shower, maybe even a nap, because I'm absolutely knackered, and I'll see you at lunchtime. This is where I'm staying in Bergen in City Box. Now, it's not the first time I've used them. I stayed in a City Box in Tallinn, and I really like them. So it's a kind of semi-budget brand that's really starting to grow on me. Let's have a look at it. The first thing you'll notice is that when you check in and check out, you use these terminals. There is always someone on site, but I've never spoken to anyone in a City Box. I've always used these. Downstairs you've got this little lounge area that's got TVs because there are no TVs in your room in City Box. Now that's not something that bothers me. I never watch TV in a hotel. I'm always just on YouTube. And you can use the kitchen facilities and there's little vending machines as well. And see that one there? It's like a Kit Kat but it's 10 times better. It's my favourite wafer chocolate. Right, let's go up to the room. You'll need your card to operate the lift. It's not easy doing anything while you're holding the GoPro, you know that. So the room itself, like I say, it is semi-budget, so don't be expecting a big room or a grand room. It is quite basic. But, the bed is comfortable, you get a nice wee desk, and of course you've got an ensuite. I really couldn't ask for more. And bearing in mind we're in Norway and in the centre of Bergen, this room cost 80 quid a night. Now you will find cheaper, but they won't be anything like as good as this. so busy in there otherwise would have sat in and taken one of these taster plates but I've gone for a takeaway fish burger and it looks immense. That's what a burger should look like Burger King. Right so if I don't get attacked by seagulls I'll be eating this down by the bay. Lovely. This could get very messy but I don't really care. I'm not just saying this folks, this is the best fish burger I've ever eaten. I wish I was here longer, I'd be back every day, but my advice is, take a napkin. I 
tried to have a wee look in the fish market, but it's very busy and very touristy. So, yes, I'll give that a miss. So there we go folks, that was Bergen and I will see you in Stavanger. And here we are in Stavanger. Now just to clarify, I don't really have the power to just click my fingers and arrive here instantly. No, I've been traveling all day today and the plan was actually just to relax this evening, do some research on the place and do this segment tomorrow morning. But the weather is so nice this evening and it's actually due to be raining again tomorrow. So let's just get this done now. Now I've just checked myself into the Stavanger bed and breakfast which is just over there but can I just say look at this neighbourhood all the old wooden houses and they're so beautifully kept I know the sun makes a difference but as first impressions go this is the place to be Now I have literally just got off the bus and I haven't got my bearings at all yet but according to Google Maps the harbour is straight ahead and I always like to start at a harbour if there is one in the city so that's where we'll go first. Seriously guys I'm so blown away by this place so far. It feels like we could be in Martha's Vineyard or something. It's absolutely gorgeous. Of course, I don't expect the whole city to be like this, but I've certainly chosen a nice part of town, haven't I? Now, let's see if the cats are friendly. That's a good indication. Hiya. Yeah. Nope. No, no, no. Right, I know it's not the first time I've said this, but can we just move here, please? Well, the answer to that question, I'm afraid, is no. You see, Stavanger is an oil town. In fact, it might be the oil capital of Norway. And that makes it a wee bit more expensive even than the rest of this country. Now, even when I was looking for somewhere to grab something to eat, it was coming up with like Michelin star restaurants. It's all a bit out of my league. <laughs> Oh boy, this store is amazing. Oh, I could get very distracted in here. Right, I've just had a wee idea. Instead of stressing about getting all this done tonight, maybe if the rain does come tomorrow, I could visit a couple of museums because I believe there are some really good museums in Stavanger. So that would take the pressure off a bit, wouldn't it? Oh boy, I was just taking a clip of the bridge and I've just noticed the mountain range behind it. Wow. Hey, do you know something that's just occurred to me? I'm not really seeing many tourists here. I mean, there are one or two, but if this was Bergen, it'd be absolutely rammed. I'm struggling in my head to think of this as the fourth largest city in the country. It's just got this really kind of small town feel to it. And I mean that in a good way. Oh boy, it just gets better. We've got more harbour. We've got the big ship. And then over in the background, sorry, you probably can't see it from the sun, but there's a collection of white wooden houses that just looks absolutely perfect. I think we've got to go around there as well. Oh, 
old open ship. Maybe we can go aboard. Can we go in and you can get it up and on both sides? Thank you. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's an old, it's an old one. <laughs> <laughs> what a stunning old ship. Look at this woodwork. I'm a bit confused by this. Maybe it's like a restaurant or something as well. But just being able to come on and wander about. What a bonus. This ship is so cool. When I was a kid, I used to read a lot of Tintin, and this is the kind of ship that him and Captain Haddock would have had adventures on. That's what extremely rich people look like. It'd be rude not to have a beer and have a wee read about the ship's history, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's all in Norwegian. Cheers. Oh, that's so refreshing. Well, that was cool, wasn't it? But let's get back ashore while I'm still sober. Now the building behind me here might be under construction at the moment but it's a very important place. This is Stavanger Cathedral and it's the oldest cathedral in all of Norway. So there's an excuse to come back here. I'll have to come back and see it when it's all done. So on the signs, this is called the Old Town. Let's go and see if we can have a wee wander around. Wherever you go in the world, there's always a shopping trolley, isn't there? Even in a beautiful place like this. Oh, this is just ridiculous, isn't it? I remember when I went to Sweden, someone said, you've got to go to Norway. They were right. And it's not even that busy, is it? That's because everyone's down the road getting...
Well, I think that'll do us for today. I was up at six this morning and I'm absolutely knackered. So I'll see you tomorrow. Aye, it sure knows how to rain in Norway. It could teach Scotland a thing or two. This is where I stayed last night, by the way, the Stavanger bed and breakfast. It's a bit rough around the edges, but my budget had finally run out. Comfy bed, though. It's a bit like Scottish weather. I'm sure if I just wait five minutes, it'll be sunny again. Maybe that's wishful thinking. I'm just so glad I made that decision to do the filming last night. It just wouldn't have been the same in this weather, would it? It's definitely a museum's day. All right, let's duck in somewhere for breakfast. Where will we go? I passed this one last night, it looks really cool. All right, let's go for it. In a lot of ways, Stavanger reminds me of St. John's in Canada. All the beautiful wooden buildings, very colourful, amazing places to grab a coffee, and everyone is so friendly. Oh, and they're not averse to a bit of rain. Right, the oil museum first, I think. Just got to work out how to actually get in. It does look pretty cool though in there. Ah, I think the entrance is round here and just as I decide to go into a museum, the rain stops. So we're into the museum, as you can see, they've got lockers which take a 10 kroner coin or a euro 50 cents. And the girl was actually saying as well, if I hold on to my receipt, if I visit any other museum in Stavanger today, I get 50% discount. So we might just use that. Now I'm not going to record everything in here, of course, but I'll give you a good wee look around. Oh, hello. And to think I complain about the weather, imagine that. There's absolutely no way I could be this guy. I must admit, this looks more like a spaceship. And me getting in here isn't gonna be easy. I'm such an idiot, I've come in here without even checking what this is, but I imagine it's some kind of survival craft. But I don't fancy bobbing about in the sea with 30 other people in here. Oh look, yeah, it's a rescue capsule and I wasn't far off, 28 people it holds. Oh man, my claustrophobia kicks in just looking at this. Look at the squeeze to get in. No thank you. Aye, there's good reason why those guys are paid the big money, yeah? Like I say, there's loads to read in, as well as the main floor, you can also head up the stairs and visit each one of the Space Age-like pods that sit out over the water. Each one has a different exhibition and they're all definitely worth looking at. What a cool museum this is. This place is fantastic and the views aren't bad either. I reckon you could spend at least two hours in here. There's loads of stuff to read and it's very interactive as well. It's starting to get a bit busier now. This is definitely a museum day, but just as well, places like Stavanger that get their fair share of rain have some very good museums. I've got no idea what this guy's doing here though. 
These aren't survival suits, by the way. This is just Stavanger winter fashion. And before I leave, here's a stark reminder of what the power of the sea can do to industrial grade steel and the danger associated with extracting oil from under the ocean floor. On that note, let's go. Right, let's head to a slightly smaller museum now. I go into the museum, the rain stops. I come out the museum, the rain starts again. I sometimes think I'm in some kind of Truman show. Hey, look at these ropes. I reckon they could hold a pretty big ship. Oh no, here's the rain again. I love it how you can get so up close to the ships here. It's not like this in every port. And we've got a couple of big beauties in today. I've had an idea, Viking Cruises. You should make that bit at the back into a bathing platform. The rain's on hard again. I'll hide away in a phone box. Hello? Oh, hi. Can you do something about this weather, please? Thank you. If you've booked a cruise that stops in Stavanger, it's so good to know that the ships get very close to the old town. I know that that's not always the case. Right, let's go up to the Canning Museum. With this ship in port, I hope it's not too busy or we'll be squeezed in like sardines. Right, so we're in the Canning Museum now. Again, there are lockers and again, there are some deals for other museums. So that's good to know. Right, we're in. One thing to bear in mind though that was confusing some people, it's not just the Canning Museum, but it's also a print museum. And I think we also get access to an old Norwegian house, which is called number 90. But we're going to have a look at that in a moment. The quality of the museums here is fantastic. And here we are coming through towards the sardines. There's the little fellas there. Right, now try doing this with a GoPro. Not so easy. Disaster. It's so funny, the quirky nature of this museum turns a subject you didn't even know you were interested in into a place that you'd happily come back to time and time again. It's very well put together. I must admit, I love random museums like this and I guarantee you that every single one of these machines would still work perfectly. while putting wee fishes in a can. It was big business. And we'll now head next door to number 90, which is a restored home from the 1800s. I be sure not to miss this wee detour if you're visiting the Canning Museum. It's a beautiful old 1836 home, faithfully restored and filled with furniture from the 1920s to the 1960s. So that covers the very best of interior design in my opinion. So much cooler than modern living, isn't it? But where's the TV?
to be honest, it's not that much different from my granny's old house. Oh, and it looks like granny's still in bed. And who can remember their granny's kitchen looking just like this one? Oh, I can remember thinking it was so uncool at the time. How wrong was I and how trendy was she? Oh, this is like our stairs at home. Oh no, I'm going to have to try one now. This isn't exactly what I was expecting for lunch today, but it's beautiful. It tastes a bit like our broth smokies. Ah, souvenir found. I think I prefer the chocolate version. And we're out into the bright sunshine. Stavanger will always keep you guessing with the weather. I've never been on a cruise and I'm always amazed by these big ships. I imagine that some places these dock at, it probably doubles the population. Hi darling. So that was Stavanger folks and I hope that along with Bergen, you enjoyed that wee comparison video. I think it's quite clear which one I really want to come back to, but they're both incredible places. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time, bye bye. And as I flew away from Stavanger Airport, I still had one wee treat left in store as we passed over where this Norway adventure started just a few days ago. I can still remember being down there so hungry the night before the ferry to Bergen. Despite me flying away just now, I still hope to share with you a couple more videos from this incredible country. So please stay tuned and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.